What is up you guys, I'm Faye92, and I'm back today with another video. I hope everybody had a good Thanksgiving. I hope everybody is staying safe out there. And uh, let's get right into it. Today I'm gonna be talking about finances, and I wanna explain to you guys why it's important for us barbers to set goals, and how it is possible as a barber to make $100,000 a year. And what I'm gonna be talking about today is pretty universal if you're in the service industry, if you do makeup, do uh, nails, um, hairstylists, anything you do, cosmetologists, anything. If you provide a service for somebody, this system or this this way of setting your goals should work for you. And it's important to set goals because if not, you're just you're not going in any direction. I will include how I I calculate my taxes. And I just want to let you guys know I'm not a CPA, so you know take my advice however you at your own risk or whatever. Let's get right into it. All right, so let's just assume that for a barber to be successful, you would consider $100,000 a year successful, right? So let's just assume that $100,000 a year is successful, I would say, for a barber in almost any state. Maybe not New York, maybe not California, I don't know. Maybe, you know, it's different over there, cost of living is high, but in Texas, where I'm from, $100,000 a year, $100,000 a year is pretty good. And let's just assume you're okay with working six days a week. I'm not, I don't work six days a week, you know, I work set, I work five days a week, but let's just assume you work six days a week. I believe everybody deserves at least one day off. If you don't want to, that's fine, that's perfectly fine, grind it out, for, but don't make it long term make it two years three years at the most working seven days a week because then you're gonna get burnt out so let's just assume six working days works for everybody okay all right let's start it off with $15 a haircut let's say you charge $15 a haircut right and let me just say whatever price range you're at is up to you you decide what price range you want to be at what do I mean by that if you charge $15 a head guess what there's gonna people there's gonna be people that are gonna come to you might be a lot of people because fifteen dollars is pretty cheap in 2020 for a haircut if you go up to 20 you might lose a couple people here and there but actually not even 15 and 20 I, I believe everybody should be charging 20 at least now 15 leave that for unlicensed barbers cutting at the house no disrespect that's where I was at before but you gotta understand there you got ceilings when you're cutting at home and this should be one of the ceilings you can't be charging 30 35 dollars if you know if you're at home and you know it's, it's it's unprofessional but you know what that ain't even none of my business it's up to you guys however much you charge but anyways let's just say you know you want to charge 25 dollars a haircut guess what you're gonna have people at 25 and there's gonna be people that want a 20 dollars haircut and they're gonna say no you're too you, you charging too much but that's not that's not the case the reality is they're not willing to pay more than 20 dollars a haircut that's not your fault. They decide how much they want to pay. If you're $25, guess what? Then they can't afford you. It sounds crazy. It sounds arrogant, but it's the reality of it. They're not willing to pay more than $20 a haircut for whatever reason, whether they're right or wrong, it's not for us. To, it's not. It's not up to us to decide. That's just how they believe. That's what they believe that a haircut should charge. It's $20, no more than that. So for you to charge 25, that puts you over their market. You you can't. They can't. They, they don't. They don't agree with the $25 haircut. And that's that's nothing to do with you. That's nothing personal. That's just how it is. And it's the same way for all of these. Most of the market you're gonna find in the, in the $25 to $35 range. That's why I believe most of the market is. But there's a market for all this. Is a lot more for these right here. But the majority of people are okay with anything between $25 and $35 a haircut. Anything more than that, $40, $45, 50 you might get a, a few less heads, but there's a market there. And if you look at the number that the average of heads you have to do per day, it's a lot less. So you don't even have to worry about it. So what I'm saying is you decide which market you want to be at and anticipate for it. Just know that if you're charging $35 a head, there's gonna be people that are down here in the 15s and the 20s that are gonna tell you, I don't know why you're charging 35, you tripping, that's too much. There's no way I will pay 35 and that's okay. They're from down here, that's where they're from. They're from the 15, 20, even $25 range. That's them, that's all right, it's not personal. That's just what they believe. And there's nothing wrong with that, but you're not in that price range, you're in the 35, you're in the 40. There's a lot of people that are like, hey, 35, 40, Hey man, you do a good job. I'll pay that. I got people that pay $35 every year. I don't even charge $35, but that's just what they believe. So you got to understand that whatever market you're at, don't take it personal when people from the other markets, the $15 market, the $20 market, don't take it personal whenever they tell you you're charging too much. It's not up to them to decide. It's up to you to decide where you believe your skill set is at. That's another thing. Please be realistic with your skill set. If you know you're fresh out of barber school and you're still leaving a couple lines here and there, maybe you shouldn't charge $45 for a haircut. Don't get me wrong, that should be your goal to eventually, you know, reach whatever market you want to be at, but be realistic. You know, if you if you know good and well that you you're still trying to figure it out, you're still trying to figure out how to get that ball line out, you're still trying to get a little better at edge ups, don't try to jump to the $35 and $40 price range. 
stay where you're at for now you know until you until you reach this number right here or more than that if you're cutting 15 dollars a haircut and you're doing 23 to 30 to 30 heads a day maybe it's time to go up to 25 and cut that market in half and look at that you're gonna cut that market in half and still make almost the same amount you're gonna cut half as many heads and still bring in almost this but anyways with that being said let's just check the math on one of these uh let's just say you charge in thirty dollars a haircut okay thirty dollars a cut right let's type that in thirty dollars you're doing what do i have on there we're rounding up so thirty dollars a head you're doing 12 heads a day it's 360 dollars a day you guys that's a lot of money when I was young, I worked at Bush's. I don't know if you guys know what Bush's is, but it's Bush's Chicken. It's like a little fast food uh, chicken place down here in Texas. I worked at Bush's, and I wouldn't, I would, I wouldn't even dream of making this much in a week. And I worked six days a week. The most I ever got was like 190. So that's that's one day, you guys. We have so much potential and and making money that is it's crazy. All right, so $360 a day. Like I said, let's say you're working six days a week. If you work seven, that's even less. If you work five, you should make that a little more. So you work six days out of the week. So multiply that by six. You're bringing in $2,160 a week, right? All right, so multiply that by four, $8,640 a month. Multiply that by 12, bam, $103 thousand dollars you're a hundred thousand dollar a year barber congratulations all it takes is goals decide your decide your market first of all this is the first step right here decide what market you're at whatever be realistic about it for me i'm at the 25 and just a little you know spoiler spoiler alert for any of my clients that watch this 2021 maybe towards the end of 2021 maybe beginning of 2022 i'm gonna be at 30 this is just a heads up but Decide what market you're at, then look at your, your your daily average that you need to average, and then look at your weekly average. This is a little more important right here, your weekly average. Why do I say that? Because, okay, let's say you charge $30 a head. Your goal is to get 11 heads a day, right? So you come in on a Wednesday and it's slow. You didn't do 11 heads. You did five heads, right? It's a Wednesday, you're slow. You only did five heads. Okay, if you come the next day on a Thursday and you didn't do 11 heads, you did 20 that's nine more than the average that makes up for that slow Wednesday so at the end of the week this should be your goal right here I want you guys to, I want you guys to screenshot it let me clear this out screenshot it and make this right here your goal whether you're a barber whether you're a makeup artist whether you do eyebrows esthetician hairstylist cosmetologist whatever you guys do know your market set your prices set your daily and weekly goals and you should be good you should be successful you should be a money-making machine in the service industry there's no reason for us to be broke there's no reason for us to be struggling there's no reason for our professions to be looked as i don't want to say unprofessional but you know people don't look at doctors people don't look at barbers or or, or cosmetologists or muas or estheticians they don't look at them the same as doctors and lawyers and stuff like that don't get me wrong they make significantly more money than us but that doesn't mean we're making twenty dollars twenty twenty thousand dollars a year thirty thousand dollars a year these are very reachable goals you guys for us to be a hundred thousand dollar a year self-employed individuals these are very reachable goals right here and if you guys would just set them it starts off with a daily goal that's why I put per day and it goes to a weekly goal. I didn't put per year because it's kind of pointless. You know, the goal is make $100,000 a year. I'm not going to divide that into haircuts over here. But look at this graph. The more you charge, the easier, the easier and more reachable that goal should be. But it's up to you guys. All right. Now we're going to talk about taxes. And like I said in the intro, I'm not a CPA. I don't want to, you know, get you guys in, into any trouble or nothing like that. And it's not my job to, to tell you guys how to do your taxes or anything like that. That's up for a CPA tax professional is going to help you a lot more than I can. But this is the tax calculator that I made. I'm married. And, and if you're not married yet, I recommend you guys put a finger on it because I mean, put a finger on it, put a ring on it, put a ring on that finger because it could save you some money, especially if you're filing joint. All right. So I don't know if you guys know the difference between itemized and standardized deduction, but just a quick, quick, quick breakdown of it. The government believe the government believes that you made a certain amount of money. Well, they believe that you spent a certain amount of money in order to make money. They call that the standard deduction. It used to be 6,000 for individuals, got doubled. When uh, Trump came into office, it became $12,000 per individuals. Might not agree with everything he does. Don't really like him as a person, but hey, I agree with that. I love it. $12,000 per individual. If you're married, 
that 12,000 standard deduction turns into 24,000, right? It's two people, you and your wife. So what is the standard deduction? All right, let's say you made $100,000 right here where the mouse is at. $100,000, you take the standard deduction, they knock off $24,000 from that. So this is what you're getting taxed. You're getting taxed on $76,000. You're not even gonna hit the 22% tax bracket. You're gonna be at 10 and 12. So the way taxes get taxed, the way your income gets taxed is it gets broken down. I think I got it pulled up right here. If you're married, uh, this is married right here. Your first $19,000, $19,750 is gonna get taxed at 12%. Anything, anything between 19,751 and 80,250 is gonna get taxed at 12%. But look at this row that I'm looking at. This is married, okay? If you're single, it's different. You see that? It's only 40,000 right here instead of 80. So you're gonna, you're gonna jump into that 22% range if you're single. Just a heads up, you guys. That's why I'm telling you guys, if you get married, you're gonna save a little bit of money on your taxes. And if you have kids, even more money. But let's minimize that. So this is how much you're gonna pay. $100,000 takes a standard deduction. If you're married, you're gonna be taxed for $76,000. 10%, $19,750 is gonna get taxed at 10%. $56,250 is gonna get taxed at 12%. So this is your tax bill for each one of those. And then the total is right here. Your federal income tax is gonna be $8,725. That's just federal though. That's just your federal income tax. And then on top of that, you know what? I didn't even put it on here because I live in Texas and we don't gotta worry about state income tax. You gotta add your state income tax on top of that. And I don't know if some, I don't know, I think most state income tax is, is flat rate. So it, the whole income just gets charged at the same rate. It's not bracketed like federal. So this is if you're in Texas, any of the non-state income tax states, Texas, Florida, uh, I wanna say Washington, maybe Oregon, one of those two. Anyways, we don't have to worry about state income tax. So this, this is how much you're gonna pay federal income tax, and then you got the self-employed tax. What is the self-employed tax? All right, you guys, whenever you're employed, you pay 7.5% payroll taxes, your employer pays the other 7.5%. And that's Social Security, uh, Medicaid, or and all the other, you know, the, you know the, what they take out of your check, 7.5%. Well, when you're self-employed, you don't have an employer to cover that other half, so you gotta, it's 15.3%. So this is this is how much you're gonna you're gonna get taxed for the self-employed tax. So you're gonna add these two up. If you have any tax credits, you're gonna subtract them right here. So I have kids, so I get a thirty-five hundred dollar tax credit. If I make a hundred thousand dollars a year, my total tax bill will be sixteen thousand eight hundred fifty-three, which is about fourteen hundred a month, which is about three hundred fifty-one a week. That's crazy, but you're bringing in $100,000 a year in income. I don't think that's bad. 351, you're bringing in $2,000 a week. You take out those 351, plus a little bit for savings, you're looking at $1,500 a week after taxes, you guys. That's good money. $1,500 a week after taxes, your tax bill's already taken care of, and you saved a little money on the side. That's good right there. But you gotta be married to get these, the, the, the $24,000 standard deduction. If you're single, this is your tax calculator right here. You're gonna jump into that 24% and the 22% because you made 100,000. So standard deduction is only 12,000. Remember, you're just one person. It's not two person, two people no more. So it's only 12,000. Standard deduction is $12,000. You're gonna get taxed effectively at $88,000. That's how much they're gonna tax you. 900, 875 of that is gonna get taxed at 10%. 30,250 is gonna get taxed at 12. 35,875 is gonna get taxed at 22, and 2,472 is gonna get taxed at 24%. So you add all that up right here, you're looking at a tax bill, a uh, federal income tax bill of $13,103 in federal income taxes. Look at that. Same income, but I'm married, filed joint. Me and my wife, she did a little little side hustle here and there, so she worked a little bit, made a little money, made two, three, four hundred, five hundred, however many. So. I get, to file, I get to file joint, look at the difference in federal income tax. It gets bracketed different. You see that? And because of the standard deduction, the self-employment tax is higher too. Look at that. Because I'm getting taxed for 88,000, not 76,000. 
Uh, no tax credits if you ain't got no kids. Woohoo, no child support, blah, 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 blah. You don't got to buy diapers, blah, 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 blah. But guess what? You're paying more taxes too. Congratulations. Total tax bill, you're looking at 26567 Monthly is 2000 Weekly tax bill is about 5553 So you're going to pay more taxes from being single because you don't have a family to support. So that means you get to contribute more to the economy. But either way, the most important thing, you guys, is tax credits. Or, or if you can figure out a way to make your itemized deductions, because you get to choose. You can take the standard deduction or you can do itemized. If you do itemized, you got to prove how much money you spent investing into your business. If you can prove that you spent more than $12,000, all of these numbers change right here. You're, you're not getting taxed for $88,000. you are getting taxed for less than that. Because you found a way to itemize your deduction and say it added up. Say you spent twenty four thousand dollars and and you know rent for a building and you own a barbershop and you can be in this you know you can pay you can get taxed on this amount too if you can find a way to add another twelve thousand to your itemized deduction and you know you, there's plenty of ways to figure out how to pay less taxes. There's a lot of incentives. The last thing you want to do is. Claim less money. That's what you don't want to do. Why do I say that? If you claim less money, the government goes off of that, you guys. So if you only claim fifty thousand, forty thousand a year, and you're making a hundred thousand, guess what? You go buy a house, you can afford a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar house, you can afford a three hundred and fifty thousand dollar house, but according to your tax returns, you can only afford a hundred thousand dollar house, maybe eighty thousand dollars, depending on how much you're claiming, maybe even less than that. You don't have no proof of income if you're not claiming what you're making. And then, so then you can't use debt as leverage because you can't get approved for any uh, uh, investment properties or anything like that. You don't have anything on paper that shows that you've made money. So you guys, we, we got to get really smart about how we do our taxes. So if you, if you get a CPA, they'll figure out ways to get you more tax credits, to get you more uh, deductions. They'll figure out that's what they do. That's their job. You got to find somebody that's going to work with you. The last thing you want to do is claim less. That's what you don't want to do because then you're not getting credit. You're working hard. You're setting all these goals. You're making $100,000 a year and you, you don't have nothing to show for it. You don't have no proof. You know, you go to the bank, they're like, you're making $40,000. You can't approve you for nothing. When you know you're making $100,000, that's heartbreaking, you guys. You can't buy the house that you want. You can't afford the car. All that, yada, yada, yada. But it all comes down. To this right here make sure you you find tax credits instead of claiming less so here it is right here you guys take a screenshot put this as your wallpaper set these as your daily goals your weekly goals depending depending on your price on your market right here if you're charging 30 this should be your goals right here write that down somewhere put it on your screen and figure out ways to get more people through that door and and you know to come to you to get a haircut or Come to you to get service, whatever you do. There's so many options out there for marketing. You can run ads and bring in two, three people. If you if you run an ad for fifty dollars, and that gains you one or two new clients, weekly clients, within two weeks, the ad would have already paid for itself. Maybe even that first week, depending on what you're charging. So don't don't blow these ads off. They're, you can really use them if you use them right. But yeah, take a screenshot of this, you guys. Set your goals. Know your your your, your market. You know whether you're a cosmetologist, whether you're a barber, whether you're uh, MUA, um, lash tech, eyebrows, whatever you do, we all we all do the same thing. We make people feel better about themselves. All right, let me get out of this. But yeah, I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, all of this is just advice. Remember, like I said, I'm not a CPA. CPA is gonna teach you way more than I can. I'm learning off of other people, off of other CPAs, off of you know other people on YouTube talking about stuff, and I'm bringing it off for you guys to help you guys be more successful when it comes to finances because that's something that I had to figure out the hard way and I want everybody in my industry to be successful because it makes our whole industry look better as a whole when we're successful and not just barbers but cosmetologists, MUAs, eyebrow techs, lash techs, everybody that services somebody we can be a lot more respected if, if we're more successful and uh, I appreciate everybody watching um make sure you like and subscribe oh yeah i got my first check from google it wasn't even a check it was direct deposit and i'm not going to tell you guys how much it was because it was it wasn't much 
But guess what? It's residual, and I appreciate it. And it's all because of you guys. You guys been watching all my videos. Y'all been liking. Y'all been subscribing. Y'all done shared them on Facebook. Did this and that. I appreciate you guys for that. And best believe I'm going to be dropping a lot more content. It's not just going to be barber stuff. It's going to be a lot more. I'm still going to drop haircut tutorials here and there. But I feel like a low fade tutorial is not going to benefit a cosmetologist. Or, or you know what? Maybe it will. I'm tripping. But it's not going to benefit a MUA, you know, as much as this video might benefit. You know what I mean? Because, uh, you know, not everybody wants to learn how to cut hair. And that's okay. But I'd rather teach people how to be a little smarter with their money uh, and a bunch of other stuff that doesn't necessarily have to be tied to, a, you know, the barber industry. And that'll open up the market for more viewers and uh, it'll help a lot more people. And at the end of the day, that's what I want to do. And I appreciate all you guys for watching. Like and subscribe. And I'll be back.